Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is Physics Chapter 84. Today's topic is Coulomb's Law. Objectives are no electrostatic force similar to gravity is a field force. Understand that electrostatic force between two objects is directly proportional to their charge and inversely proportional to the distance between them. To understand the similarities and differences between gravity and the electrostatic force be able to determine how electrostatic force is changed by changing the amount of charge on one or both objects, and how the force is related to the distance between the two charged objects, and be able to calculate Fe if uh, you are given the two charge quantities and distance between them. The charge interaction revisited. So the two fundamental charge interactions are opposite charge attract and a like charge repel. These fundamental interactions are resulted in an electrostatic force between the two charged objects. So here is an example of a charge tube levitating a piece of foil. So on the foil, there are electric force and a gravity force. So when the two forces balance, the foil can float. The electric force, like all forces, those are vector quantities. That means it has direction. So when we add uh, two forces together, we have to consider the direction. The electric force is a non-contact force. It exists despite the fact that interacting objects are not in physical contact with each other, such as this. So this gravity, both gravity and the electric force are non-contact force. Piece of foil is not touching the earth, but there is a force of gravity act on, act on it. And piece of foil is not touching this uh, charged uh, uh, rod, and it is not, uh, but there's still an electric force acting on it. Now let's take a look at this example. An electron is located one meter from a positive two Coulomb charge, as shown in the diagram. The electrostatic force acting on the electron is directed toward which point? So here is the electron, here is the positive charge. So these two oppositely charged objects will attract each other. So the force will be going toward the positive charge. So it's directed toward D. Another example. So two plastic rod A and B each have a negative charge. The rod the rods and a positive charged sphere are positioned as shown. So here is a positive charged sphere. So which vector represent um, the resultant of this sphere? So one force will be going down, one force will be going to the left. The resultant of these two forces will produce the resultant as D. So the force between charges is governed by Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law states that electric force between two charged objects is directly proportional to the product of the quantity of charge. So if this charge is Q1, this is charge of Q2. So the, the force will be directly proportional to the product Q1 times Q2 and inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance. Inversely, to the square, so inverse squared, okay, r squared. So in this equation, charge Q1 is the charge on the first object, Q2 is the charge on the second object, r is the distance between the center of the two objects, k is a, a constant, is known as Coulomb's law constant, k is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newton times meter squared over Coulomb squared and Fe is Newton's. So in this equation, Q1 and Q2 should be in coulombs. Uh, R is in meters, so you will result Fe in Newton's. When you use this equation, if you have a positive value, that means force is repulsive because you only can have positive value when Q1 and Q2 have the same charge, either both positive or both negative. So we know like charge repels. And if the force value is negative, that means the force is attractive. 
this results when Q1 and Q2 have opposite charge. So one is positive and the other one is negative. So let's take a look at this example. So two balloons with charge 3.37 microcoulombs and negative 8.21 microcoulombs attract each other with a force of 0.0626 newtons determine the separation distance between the two balloons. So here is what's given micro means 10 to the negative 6. Positive, negative, and this is Fe, you have to find R. So here's the equation you solve for R, R equals to remember Fe and R squared can be uh, exchanged place. So R is just the square root of k times q1 times q2 divided by Fe. After you substitute all the quantities in, you will have uh, 1.99 meters. Another example, suppose two point charges, each with a uh, one coulomb of charge separated by a distance of one meter. What is the electric force of repulsion between them? So <laughs> Q1, Q2, R was Fe, simply substitute will have 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newtons. It is very, very, very big. This is because K is a very big number. So it is an incredibly large force which compares in magnitude to the weight of more than 2,000 jetliners. So objects simply do not acquire a charges in the order of one coulomb. In fact, charges is often expressed in units of a microcoulomb or nanocoulomb. So coulomb is extremely large amount of quantity of charge. So here you need to be familiar with micro is negative six. That means one coulomb is 10 to the six of a microcoulombs. And one coulomb is 10 to the ninth nanocoulombs because one nano is 10 to the negative nine coulombs. And similarly, one microcoulomb is and to the negative six coulombs. Now let's compare electric force versus gravitational force. The two equations are very similar in form, right? K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Fg is big G, a constant, times M1, M2 over R squared. So the, so the form is the same. They are also directly proportional to the course of the force. The course of the electric force is charge. The course, course of gravity is the mass and inversely relates to the distance squared. So those are the similarities. Both equations have the same form. Both equations shows inverse square relationship between force and separate di uh, separation distance. Both equations show that force is proportional to the product of the quantity that causes the force. Both electric force and gravitational force are non-contact forces. So those are the similarities. What's the difference? The difference, Coulomb's law constant is significantly greater than Newton's universal gravitational constant, G. This is 10 to the negative 11. This is positive 9. So it's 10 to the 20 times bigger. That is very, very big. Okay, so it's so therefore electric force is significantly stronger than the force between uh, than gravitational force. Another thing is gravitational force is only attractive, but uh, electric force can be attractive or repulsive. So attractive is only when the charges are opposite, repulsive when the charges are the same. But for the mass, since mass doesn't charge, doesn't have uh, positive or negative. So gravitational force is always attractive. Let's take a look at this example. So the diagram below shows two identical metal spheres, A and B, separated by a distance D. Each sphere has mass M and possesses a charge of Q, positive, positive. Which diagram represents electric force and gravitational force on sphere B due to A? Well, on sphere B due to A, uh, electric force should be going to the right because electric force is repulsive. And on A, uh, gravitational force is attractive. So gravitational force should be going to the left. So we say gravitational force to the left and electric force to the right. So the answer is B. 
Another example, two protons are located one meter apart. Compared to the gravitational force of attraction between the two protons, the electric force between the two protons is, we know electric force is much stronger. This is because the Coulomb constant K is much, much bigger than gravitational constant G. So electric force is stronger and it's repulsive because positive and positive repel each other. So the answer is one. Okay, let's take a uh, look at another example. Coulomb's law of force and the distance have an inverse squared relationship. Inverse squared for the graph, it would look like this. So the factor, uh, that is the, the factor by which electric force is changed is inverse of the square of the factor in which separation is changed. So if distance is doubled, the force would be decreased by two squared. That means be quartered. If the separation is tripled, then the force will decrease by a factor of nine, which is three squared. So let's do a couple of examples. So two charges that are two meters apart repel each other with a force of two times 10 to negative five newtons. If distance is decreased to one meter, if distance is halved, then the force will become quadrupled. So quadruple of two times 10 to negative five is eight times 10 to negative five. The answer is three. Now, which diagram represents electrostatic force between the alpha particle, alpha particle uh, with a charge of positive two elementary charges and a positive and a positive charge the nucleus as a function of their distance of separation. So alpha particle is basically is a, a helium without um, electron. So has two has a proton has two elementary charges. So two protons and two neutrons. So the two charged particle. Um, as the distance increases, the force decreases. So the answer is A, according to Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law of force and charge have a direct relationship. So this means as the charge increases, the force increases with the same amount. So the let's take a look at this example. If the charge on each of the two spheres a fixed distance apart is doubled if the charge is doubled. If the charge on each of the two sphere is doubled, so Q1 is doubled, Q2 is doubled, what happens to the force? The force will quadruple because two times two is four. Another one, a repulsive electric force magnitude F exists between the two metal spheres have identical charge Q. The distance between their center is R. Which combination would produce no change in the elect electrostatic force between the two spheres? Doubling Q on one while doubling R? No, that won't do. That will force become one half. Doubling Q on both spheres while doubling R? Well, two times two divided by two squared gives you one. So the answer is two. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.